ramp. So I'm getting about a 10% degradation in current through these resistors. That is due to the internal resistance of this power supply. In part three of this lab assignment, we're going to implement a simple operational amplifier based circuit. And in fact, we've looked at this circuit in lecture. It's an inverting voltage amplifier. So V out should be the negative of R2 over R1 times V in. There are a few practical things we want to point out about this circuit in the lab. One is the input resistance. Okay, this circuit will actually draw some power from V in. Okay? By increasing R1, you can reduce the amount of power that's drawn from the supply voltage. We'll also calculate the gain for this circuit and compare it with the measurements that we'll make in the lab. We'll also emphasize that we have to connect up external power supplies to this circuit and we'll take a look at the effects of saturation that those power supplies put on the circuit itself. Now let's look at the implementation of this inverting voltage amplifier. This is my inverting voltage amplifier circuit. Here's my op amp. I have a feedback resistor going from the output terminal, which is pin number six, to the inverting input, which is pin two. I'm using VREF1 to apply a voltage across this input resistor, which is also connected to pin two. My non-inverting input, pin three, is connected to ground. I've picked these resistors such that they give me a gain of about two. Furthermore, I have a 2.4 kilo ohm resistor here, which should give me my desired input resistance of about two kilo ohms. Now, I want to emphasize that I need to provide power to this operational amplifier for it to do its job. VREF provides the input, but I need two additional power supplies to provide the negative voltage supply, which is here at pin 4. So VP minus is going to this strip, which then goes to pin 4. VP plus is providing the positive power supply voltage here at pin 7. It's going up here to this strip, which is then connected to pin 7. So I should get a gain of 2. So whatever I put in at VREF, I should get twice that at the output, but it should be inverted. So if I put in a positive voltage at VREF, I should get a negative voltage out and vice versa. I'm going to measure my output voltage using V meter 1. Now let's go to the waveform software and apply power to the overall circuit. OK, I've got VP plus is at 9 volts. VP minus is at minus 9 volts. VREF I currently have set to 1 volt. If I turn power on, I have 1 volt here. I'm getting about negative 2 volts out. So my output is about negative 2 times what my input is. If I increase this to 2 volts, I should get about negative 4 volts out of the output. With a negative 2 volt input, I should get about positive 4 volts. Now that's up to the point where we get to saturation. These voltages, positive and negative supplies, are giving me a maximum possible range of the output. And in fact, the output will generally be limited to be a voltage that's a volt or two within that range. So let me try applying, say, six volts here. So I should get a negative 12 volts out, but I'm actually getting negative seven volts. I can only get to within about two volts of this negative power supply. If I put, for example, negative five into this, I would expect to get 10 volts out but I can only get to within a volt or two of this positive power supply. I can only get to about 8.15 volts. And in fact, if I go to maybe negative 10 volts, this guy is not really going to change at all. It's limited by the power supply itself. In the final part of this lab assignment, part four, we want to observe the limitations of the maximum power transfer theorem. On the upper right-hand corner of this slide, we have our Thevenin equivalent circuit which has been loaded by a resistance R sub L. 
So the Thevenin circuit has an internal resistance R sub S. We know that we can transfer the maximum amount of power to R sub L by making R sub L equal to R sub S. Now we're going to look at the flip side of that. I have some fixed resistance R sub L, and I want to improve my power transfer by changing the Thevenin resistance of the Thevenin circuit. So I'm going to change the R sub S in the source to be equal to R sub L. And we'll take a look at the effect of that on the power transfer to the load. What we'll find out is that, yes, in the lower circuit on the right, we are providing the maximum power to R sub L for that Thevenin circuit. However, we are actually going to be giving R sub L less power than we do when the resistances are not matched, as in the circuit in the upper right. This concludes our background lecture for Lab 4. This lecture, in conjunction with the lab assignment itself, should provide you with sufficient information to complete the lab.